Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here, welcome back to another Destiny 2 video and today, today, the weekly reset series finally makes its return. For those of you guys that are Destiny 1 players and subscribers on this channel, you may remember that I started a series in Destiny 1 way back called the weekly reset where basically on a weekly basis, I would tell you what had reset, what had rotated, things like the nightfall, if there was a challenge mode for a raid, if there was, say, a reward you earned from a particular activity, anything like that that you were able to do again the following week was basically compiled into a quick video so you guys knew exactly what had changed that week and what you should be focusing your attention on. Now, of course, at the tail end of Destiny 1, I put down the back burner since it started to get a little bit repetitive, but now that we're into Destiny 2 and there is, of course, new stuff to take into account, things like milestones, of course, some of the other vendors, soon to be the raid, then I figured it was about time to bring it back. So if you do enjoy this, you're happy to see it return, then a like would be super appreciated. Comment down below if you have any questions. Of course, if there is anything I missed, then let me know and I will roll it into the next week's episode. This is, of course, the first reset we've had in Destiny 2, so I've gone around and tried to find absolutely everything that has changed, but of course, if I have missed anything, I will fix that in subsequent weeks. However, to begin with, if you open up your direct, the very first thing you want to talk about are, of course, the milestones. These are weekly activities that reward you with powerful gear. And if you completed them last week, then, of course, that's your lot for that character. But they have, of course, reset this week. So once again, you have the flashpoint. This week, your flashpoint is Nessus. Pretty much the same thing as last week, only instead of being on the EDZ, it is on Nessus. You just go down, complete public events until it fills up, and you can then go and collect your reward from Cade 6. As for the Nightfall this week, we'll speak about the exact Nightfall itself, but of course, that is your second milestone. That'll be your powerful gear engram from Zavala. For Call to Arms, you can just go back into the Crucible, and bear in mind, you don't have to win games for this one. You just need to play games. Wins, I do believe, give you more percentage, but either way, win or lose... Play those until it completes, and that is, of course, your third powerful engram. And the fourth one is from the Clan XP, because also, on a weekly basis, you can only earn X amount of XP. That does, of course, mean if you go to your Clan banner and you scroll to the left, you can see that your weekly contribution will have been reset. So, too, will your weekly Clan engram. So, that means the Crucible Nightfall. And interestingly, this week, it also means that you could earn the Raid and the Trials of the Nine engram. So, when someone in your Clan has completed that, then everyone in the Clan can benefit. But, of course, it also means you can push through to level two, so you can then unlock the next stage in your banner, which in this case is going to be public service, which increases your public event rewards. So once you've got that one unlocked, that is going to be pretty nice for the following week. So four milestones, four powerful engrams. Definitely make sure you grab them because, of course, tomorrow, Wednesday the 13th at 6 p.m. UK time, 10 a.m. Bungie time, the Leviathan raid will go live. So the powerful engrams here are going to be another great chance for you to jump your light. And of course, in addition to that, you have things like the exotics and all the kind of usual stuff you would be doing. Also, if you guys missed my video yesterday, then I put together a raid prep guide. I will link it down below. It goes over things like the recommended light, some of the quest details for the World Eater quest, which will lead to the exotic shotgun, and a few other interesting things like that. However, with that out of the way, turn your attention to the activities. This week, the Nightfall has changed to the Inverted Spire Strike. That is, of course, the one on Nessus, where you go down and you fight against the... Uh, the Vex boss, but your modifiers this week are ever so slightly different. Interestingly, they are not the same as what Bungie called out in their Bungie blog post. Whether that was intentional, whether they just made a mistake. Either way, your modifiers this week are once again Prism, so that is the one where you need to get the rotation going, or at least to balance coverage amongst your team, so that when the element pops up on the left, you can then use that to deal more damage. And on top of that, you also have Time Warp Rings, where the Vex Time Gates have appeared in the area, pass through them to discharge temporal energy and extend the emission timer. Don't forget that Nightfalls do now have timers. The way in which you regain time will change. So last week, you got time back simply by killing enemies. This week, if you want to get time back, you need to jump through rings. So it's going to be kind of interesting. I'm going to be jumping back into that later on this week. Of course, don't forget, if you didn't do the Rat King last week, you can still do it this week, but it just means that instead of having to complete the Arms Dealer with five minutes remaining, you will instead have to complete this strike with five minutes remaining. Moving on from there to Eververse, interestingly, the Bright Dust purchases do actually rotate on a weekly basis. So last week, there were some other options here. However, this week, you have the Sadness Emote. You also have the Funky Dance. You have the Wind Shrike Sparrow, the Shadow Dawn Ship, the Zenith SV Ship. And you also have ornaments for the Sturm. This is the Symbiosis one, and it looks a little bit like this. Plus, you also have the ornament for the Darcy Sniper Rifle, a mine of its own, which looks a little bit like this. Kind of looks like it's been a... Uh, in the freezer somewhat but that is pretty sweet on top of that you also have a uh, cloak of course this will be dependent on your class so if you're a titan you'll see something different a couple of ghosts a few shaders this shader is quite nice some of you guys were asking on twitter what shader i'm using currently for my hunter that is the shader that i have on all my armor pieces except for the cloak in which case i'm actually using bumblebee which just despite the fact it's a yellow shader 
actually makes my cape black. And of course you also have this one and your fire team medallion. Make sure you're grabbing these, especially this week. If you manage to hit the second milestone on your clan XP and you're able to earn more rewards from public events, plus you have a fire team medallion, then that in itself is going to be pretty useful. Now, as far as I can see, that is pretty much it. In Destiny 1 of old, on a weekly basis, certain activities would give you certain rewards. Whereas in Destiny 2, it seems to be a little bit cleaner, where those fixed activities just give you recurring rewards, recurring engrams. Meanwhile, you have your global things like milestones, which are your main goals to aim for. So for the time being, that appears to be everything we need to worry about in a reset. Of course, once the raid comes around, there will be additional things to talk about. But until then, that is a look at your very first reset in Destiny 2. Again, if you have any questions, by all means let me know, but make sure you turn your attention to those milestones, get them completed before the raid. Also, if any of you guys have not completed the exotic quest lines for your weapons, they also scale with your characters. So if you've got, say, Mida Multitool on your first character, if you do it again on your second character and pass your gear over, then you can get it to drop at a higher light. So for those of you guys looking to boost a little bit more before the raid, that is something else you're going to want to do. But until then, thank you for watching, take it easy, catch you next time, peace out.